Time is 11 o'clock and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, today's presentation with a Syrian farmer, uh, very interesting uh, company um, seeking for capital uh, in a private placement round. Uh, with me today, I have the CEO of the company, Ole Viborg, and uh, the CFO of the company, Jakob Dynes Hansen. Just some practical issues before we begin. Um, the audience, welcome to you, and you are more than welcome to post your questions during the presentation, either in English or Danish. Welcome, Ole. Thank you very much, Klaus. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, present here today. And um, I will jump right into it. So, Sion Pharma uh, is a drug development company, and we're actually a supplier to the entire pharmaceutical industry. We have developed a new platform that increases the solubility of small drug molecules. And you could say that we're actually on a mission here to bridge the gap between drug discovery and drug development, meaning clinical trials. It is so that today all the new drug molecules, they are insoluble, more than 90% of them. And in order to go into clinical studies from the discovery part, they need to be made soluble. Otherwise you cannot start a clinical study, at least when you're giving the drug orally. So we have developed uh, the Dispersome technology platform, which uh, can be used to increase solubility and bioavailability. The concentration of plasma of all drugs. We have patented the platform, we have demonstrated that it works, and we have now clinical trials on the way uh, in partnerships with some of the major pharma companies in the world. And we have also uh, revenues from these partnerships. So this year we expect to get revenues in the order of 1 million euros. So we have come a long way in, in this process. Our business model is based on uh, applying the technology for two different areas, in two different fields. The most important is to enable new drugs to get to the market across any therapeutic area. And the other one is to reformulate existing drugs, improving drugs that are already on the market, making them better for the patients. And based on this, we believe that we can reach break even already in 2026. In the long run, we have an ambition to reach revenues that uh, is higher than 75 million euros by 2030. I will come back to the plans how to do this. We are a team of uh, 15 full-time employees uh, in, and as well as some board members. So we are uh, 20 people in all. We are, have a very broad international background. People from more than 10 nations are in the company. We have a management team that consists, in addition to myself, of uh, Kabinian Lutman. He is a, a renowned formulation scientist, recognized on, on a global scale. Uh, he's also one of the key inventors of the technology. We have Jakob Dinus, who's here with me today. He's a former investment banker and has been also been instrumental in taking several companies to the, to the stock exchange. Wei Tian, he's joining us from Lonsa AG, one of the biggest companies in the manufacturing space in the world. He has a lot of experience in bringing new prod products to the market. And finally, we have Monica Gonzalez, who's responsible for regulatory affairs, which of course is a very important field. And she has experience both from original products as well as generic uh, uh, products. So a team that can bring new pharmaceutical products to the market. The technology platform as such is uh, in principle, not very complicated. What we do is we take a crystalline drug that uh, is insoluble or it goes into solution very slowly. We combine it with beta lactoglobulin. That's a protein we have sourced from other food ingredients. And we prepare what we call dispersome formulations. And the beauty in these formulations is that they both increase the solubility of the small drug molecules and they are stable. And we have proven that this works for more than 40, almost 50 drugs so far with a success rate of more than 80%. This means that you can load 50% drug in the protein and you can get a solubility increase of minimum five times. This is a very, very nice result that is uh, second to none in industry. We have also upscaled the technology 
and is manufactured by Spray Drying. And here we have actually a partnership where we can ensure that the customers, our partners, they can go all the way from early stage onto the commercial stage. So far, we have completed uh, around 15 uh, animal studies, both in rats, in dogs, pigs, and also monkey. And these studies, they demonstrate that what we see in the lab, increase in solubility, can be translated into an increase in bioavailability. So a very, very powerful technology. We have tried to uh, prepare a small animation uh, for this. And um, I think, me, you have to show this on your screen. Um, it's very simplified, where you see that the, you have the API, the active drug ingredient. It is uh, combined with the BLG into the dispersome formulations. And then finally, we make a tablet uh, where we also have developed technology so it can be released very quickly. And this is the, the basic of the technology. It's also a sustainable uh, formulation in that the BLG is made from uh, the, the residuals of cheese production. So we're actually reusing something that is already uh, being made for other applications. Uh, in another um, small video, we can demonstrate what is actually the technology do. And here we, come, we, can, we are comparing two, uh, uh, say, formulations. One is the dispersome formulation, uh, where uh, it's not so clear, I think, but we have the pure drug, it's a crystalline drug. It is completely impossible to get it into solution. But the dispersome uh, formulation, it's a completely clear solution that we see. So this is just to illustrate how effective it is. And this works for, um, as I said, almost any drug that we can we can, we can think of. Of course, there are competitions out there because otherwise the industry would not have taken it as far as it, they have today, but it is still a major challenge. So there are, uh, the traditional industry, they supply what we call polymers uh, to make this kind of formulations. Uh, the company like Merck in Germany, Lanza, Evonik, et cetera, they make chemical polymers that you can combine with the drugs and then make these kind of similar formulations. We also have a company in Finland, for example, that uh, called Nanoform. They make very, very small particles that increase the dissolution rate. And we also have some newcomers that are making uh, misoporous silica. So there are, of course, a lot of activity out there. We believe that in many products, we, we are better than these technologies. We can both load more drug in the formulation and we can achieve higher bioavailability. So it is a very competitive platform that we have. But of course, we don't translate this into a commercial scale on day one. The industry is conservative and it takes time to get there. We have a very strong patent position um, on the technology. We have licensed two patent families, one from the University of Copenhagen, we have another one from a company called Rousselo. And the latter one has now already uh, resulted in patents granted in most parts of the world, including Europe, Japan, China. And uh, in addition to these two patent families that form the basis for the technology, we have filed so far four patent applications in Syrian Pharma. One is on the BLG as such, the protein we get from Ala. We have then improved the technology and we have also filed patents on certain combinations of drug and the dispersome technology. And more patents will come in the future because there are ample opportunities here to, come to protect the technology. What we do is to partner. We are, I think, extremely good in partnering with some of the best companies in the world. And in addition to the, the partnerships giving us license or patent rights, and Arla that is supplying a very high quality product, we have also partnered with a company called Hovion in Portugal. Hovion is the biggest manufacturer of spray dry product in the world. And we have made a strategic collaboration that I'll show a little more about in a moment. Uh, and then most important, we have partners where we do develop their drug molecules into new formulations. And these are partners like Bayer, uh, DSM. We also have a commercial partnership with a company called Insus Pharma. They are already now developing the first reformulation, reformulation of a drug to the market. And then we have some partnerships that we cannot disclose at this time, uh, but they are 
primarily top 20 pharma companies. Arla Food Ingredients, we have worked together with these guys since 2018. Arla has built a new factory producing this BLG product that is probably the best quality in the world. And it also comes with a lot of safety documentation. So it is well suited to be a component in pharmaceutical products. For Viona, we have announced this partnership uh, in 22, uh, begin in February, where we enter the strategic collaboration, where they market the dispersal technology on a global scale, bringing new product, products uh, into uh, the collaboration. And then they contribute with the large scale manufacturing part. We have also extended the collaboration to encompass nutraceuticals. So Hoviona is pursuing this in some specific areas and we also have a joint project with them. So it's a very important the collaboration for us that also contributes, of course, some, some funding and some license fees. So to tell a little more about the market, uh, I would like to uh, explain it from two different, two different business uh, areas we're pursuing. We have the new drugs uh, that we're pursuing. And here every year you have new drug approvals in this particular field that is actually contributing about $25 billion in growth in the pharmaceutical market. And here we are tapping into the market by starting a lot of new projects with the partners. And we are expecting to have started around 60 projects until 2030. Of these projects, most will fail because it's a risky industry, but some will uh, succeed to the market. And around 2029, 2030, we expect to have at least one of these products on the market. Going to reformulation of existing drugs, this market is also growing by around $15 billion a year. Uh, it's a much more fragmented market, but it's also more accessible. We can go, we can do this reformulation quicker. And we expect to have like 10 new products on the market here by 2030. When we look at the portfolio in the new drugs field, most of them will fail, but here you can see these are the different phases. And eventually we have like two, maybe two products that are launched in 2030. And then after 2030, there will be even more coming from this portfolio. The way we make money from the partnerships is based on, say, a three-tiered model. Initially, we get some funding for feasibility studies, uh, work on uh, prototypes. Hoviona, they will jump in here during GMP manufacturing. And then during the development phase, we get milestone payments, and we will eventually get royalties from the products in the order of 2 to 4%. And when we talk about these products, they are typically on the average selling around $1 billion. So that is what is going to generate the long-term revenue for the company. In the reformulation space, we have now six programs. We have three uh, of our own programs. The first one is the most advanced in oncology. The blue ones, they are partners in different ways. The first one is Inst Pharma. They are now developing this product for the market. Who we own it, we have a joint product in the nutraceutical field, and then we have in the CBD field, the cannabis field, we have one product that has been uh, uh, advancing here over last year. And this hopefully can be developed into a clinical program within the next uh, 12 months. So a lot of activities in the portfolio where we have today around uh, 10 active uh, projects. Our own lead program at the Raxerone Dispersome is a project where we have shown that we can reduce the active drug amount in a prostate cancer product, that's called Cytiga, the original product, from 100% uh, to around 25%. That means that we can actually translate an administration of four tablets a day to one tablet a day to the patients. So this is going to be a, a nice benefit for the patients. And especially in the US, there's a willingness to pay for this kind of innovation. And we expect to have a sales uh, of this product in the order of 30 to 50 million euros when it, reached the, when it reaches the market. So Institute Pharma, they are taking another of the reformulation product to the market. It's uh, not a well-known company here in, in the northern part of Europe, but it's actually quite a big generic company with 7,000 people, and they sell products in 40 markets. They have covered all the costs for the reformulation work. They will pay some license fees, 
and eventually also royalties on sales of this product. And this is a partnership that was announced also last year. So now turning to the investor part, why would you even consider investing in a company like Syria? Well, there are actually companies out there that are, have done similar things in the past. Uh, one that we would like, or two that we would like to mention from the Nordic arena, and they're probably also some of the most relevant benchmark uh, on a global scale. Uh, Nanoform is a Finnish company that has developed a technology to reduce the particle size uh, of drug compounds. So they can increase the solution rate. They can actually not increase solubility as we can, but they can increase the solution rate. They have raised uh, 70 million euros in an IPO in 2020, and now has a market cap of around 250 to 300 million euros up and down. We have a Swedish company, Explain. They have a market cap of plus one Swedish billion. They have a similar, not, not, a, not a similar process we have, but they have also worked in this space with amorphous solid dispersions, and they have projects where they uh, aim to replace existing drugs. Uh, I think we can uh, certainly bypass these in, in terms of, of products, of product clinical studies in a few years. And finally, we have a benchmark called Ligand Pharmaceuticals, a US company that has developed, has developed, uh, they have developed the technology in, uh, in, in uh, another space where they, where they transform IV formulations into more bioavailable uh, formulations. And they today have a market cap of plus $1 billion, and they have like 100 license agreements with companies, more or less uh, comparable to what we do. So that was uh, the first uh, introduction here. Now I think I will let uh, Jakob uh, take over and continue with uh, the finances. Yeah, and just very briefly, there's a couple of good questions out there, but uh, but to the audience, I will post the questions to the management just after their presentation. So uh, have patience, we will address them uh, very soon. Thanks a lot, Ole, and uh, please, Jacob. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope the sound is okay. There was an echo before, but uh, hopefully that has gone away. Um, it's okay, Jacob. Fine, great, thank you. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to briefly uh, give you an insight to our financials uh, with the revenue development that we have had since the beginning of, uh, of our lifetime. And uh, as you can see, we actually managed to have revenues uh, from uh, year two, 2020, and the revenues have been growing and they come from uh, mostly the feasibility studies that Ole uh, was referring to before. Uh, it's growing further this year because we expect to get uh, the first real license income. And uh, beyond 23, we expect to see quite a steep increase in our revenues from feasibility and, and license income. So these revenues cover some of our costs, but of course not everything, which is why we are raising finance now. We expect to break even uh, about uh, 2026, which I think is quite um, quite an achievement uh, from a relatively young biotech company like ours. Next slide, please. So then just to give you an idea of the current uh, ownership, um, we have about 45 shareholders. Um, and what's interesting in particular is that we have two corporate uh, or actually three uh, institution, institutional uh, investors. We have our two partners, Rochelo and Hovione, um, and then Vexfonden that um, many of you are probably familiar with. Uh, and then secondly, we have a group of industry experts, so people from a well-known uh, pharmaceutical company in Denmark that have invested private money into uh, Syrian because they believe our technology can solve some of the challenges that they struggle with on a daily basis in, in their work. So I think that serves very much as a uh, validation of the technology. And as you can see, the, 
the name of that particular company is actually on the slide. Next slide, please. Then you may wonder, so what's going to happen over the next uh, few quarters? And here we have uh, the news flow that we expect at this point in time. Uh, it's not all the news we plan to to announce, but uh, some of the major news. Uh, so in this quarter, we expect to have results from an animal study in the cannabis uh, area. Next quarter, we hope to uh, enter into a license agreement with uh, our partner in that area. Uh, then in Q3, uh, very important, we hope to see uh, one of our pharma partners decide to take uh, the first uh, of their drugs, uh, which is based on the dysposome formulation into clinical studies. Uh, and that's going to be a, a major milestone. And so is the filing of an IND um, with the FDA in the US for our internal program set in 002 that all was uh, describing before. And then uh, another key milestone in the second half of this year is when Insult uh, enters uh, human studies with uh, their program and also that we get results from a bioequivalent study for our own compound set in 002. Then we have a question mark regarding the IPO because uh, as it looks uh, or as it has been looking for the last 12 months, an IPO uh, is has been difficult but we are sensing that things may now uh, warm up in the market for IPOs. Um, so there's a chance that we will go public already at the end of this year, but it might also be 2024. And then one very major milestone will be in 25 when we hopefully get the first approval by the FDA of uh, a dispersome based product. Next slide, please. So the funding round here is uh, to enable us to reach two key milestones before we are really ready for going public. One is to start, as I mentioned before, start the first human clinical study with our own lead program, in 2 And secondly, to uh, allow a partner to also decide to uh, initiate clinical study in human beings uh, with their NCE program. And then there are all the other uh, important news, but these are the two major value inflection points. And briefly on the financing, we are raising two to three million euro of 15 to 22 million kroner at a price of seven uh, per share, which equates about 100 million um, Danish kroner. And you may recall that our two uh, Nordic uh, competitors, uh, X-Bray and Nanoform, are trading at significantly higher uh, market caps. So we believe that 100 million is an attractive entry point for investors. We have raised in total 52 million from a variety of equity, loans, grants and revenue. So, so we have actually been good at, at raising money from different sources. And the um, financing round, we hope to close in the middle of March uh, this year. And here is uh, a key uh, slide with all the good reasons for you to consider investing in Syrian. There's a strong IP. We believe the management can take this company uh, to, to the stock market and also to commercialization. We have a proven technology. We have, very importantly, a number of partnerships already in place. We have a diversified uh, risk uh, platform. Uh, so compared with uh, biotech companies that only have one shot at goal, we, we have a much more mitigation uh, of our risk profile. We have commercialization. And then we believe that uh, as an investor, you have the potential of really seeing an sharp increase in the in your share price and how do you go about it if you want to invest well we would like you to come in at minimum 250,000 kroner uh, we have a very simple subscription agreement that we are happy to send to you 
Uh, so just mail me or Ole uh, if you want to have a subscription agreement, I would be happy to send it. Uh, and of course, you will be able to get access to the full investment material uh, if you are willing to sign a CDA. So then I'll hand over to Klaus so we can take the questions. Yes, thanks a lot, Jacob, and thanks, thanks a lot, lot Jacob, for a very thanks good presentation. Um, and with that said, we open up for questions, and there's a lot of good questions. If we could stay with you just uh, a little shortly, uh, Jacob, because one of the first questions from Tom, Tom uh, is the revenue split going forward. So how much is coming from, uh, from partnering? Um, and... Uh, well, it's mostly relevant, I would say, from 26 and onwards. If you could comment anything on that, uh, Jacob, could be nice. I, I can also comment on it. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, uh, because, uh, well, it's clear that the, the first revenue stream will come from the, the, the launches of reformulated drugs. So that is the main contribution until 28, 29. And then the say the new chemical entities will take over from that part. So, so that is kind. Of, so there's actually, you say there's kind of a, a, a lab over there. We have some projections, but but we're not we're not sharing them because there's so much uncertainty ongoing with this. But but in general, you say after 2030, it will certainly be the, the NCEs that are contributing. That will contribute. Uh, thanks a lot, all for that uh, for answering that uh, question. And. Um, <clears throat> Well, then uh, let's take some of the questions uh, coming in early on in the presentation. Actually, there's, there's a couple of questions from, uh, from a guy called Ton. Really good questions. There's one here about the BLG protein. Um, are you able to source that protein from other providers? Um, mm -hmm. And a little, I know, I know it's sensitive information, but, but there's a, the question also goes for exclusivity. And, and the license uh, amount. But I, I know all that you, you can comment on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand why it's important uh, because most uh, pharma companies, they are, they are concerned with having only one source of a particular uh, ingredient. And that is why we have actually, in our agreement with Anna, uh, we have uh, made sure that it is possible to either source the, the protein in principle, it, from a different source, but but more that we can actually build a new factory. Should there be a situation where we cannot supply enough of this material, but I can assure that there's 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 sufficient product, and we have a very uh, say comforting agreement with with Arla that has some exclusive elements. But I cannot comment on the particular part of, of this. In principle, you could source it from other so from other companies but we believe that the Arles product is, is by all means the, the best available out there so. thanks Lars Ole. and you actually mentioned that in your presentation as well um, about the BRG protein but, but but thanks a lot for your for your answer to that and then uh, there's a question uh, in, in in relation to the patent um, um, and and how would you uh, would you work with Hawone in US as well? And what exclusivity do they have? And, and how are the patents looking uh, in, in US? Yeah, I think that's a very, very mm -hmm. important question. And, yeah. uh, and we have, um, uh, let, me, let me put it this way, we, we are very much focused on IP and, and we, are not, we are not satisfied with getting patent grants that are limiting, let's say, our ability to maneuver in this market. So our ambition is not only to get protection of our own technology, but also be able to prevent other parties to go into this, this space. So the US patents, although we could actually have had granted a US patent a long time ago, we are pursuing it aggressively in the sense that we are we're trying to get a broad patent scope. And we have now actually two patents that are just about to, to be granted in the US. Uh, so I think the first one will be granted early this year, but it may take longer. But again, we, we are fighting to get a very strong protection. And, and in other countries, including in Europe, we have a, a scope that will de facto prevent other people from entering this space. Mm -hmm. 
But with patents, you never know. There can be uh, uncertainties that you haven't foreseen, and then it, it there are delays. But but we will we will get U.S. Uh, patent grants. Yeah. Yeah. At the partnership with Hoviona, there are some exclusive elements. Um, Hoviona is the only other partner that we have allowed to go out and market the technology. Mm. We have exclusivity in the nutraceutical space, so, uh, and we also have exclusivity in another area that I cannot comment on because it's not public. Uh, but but Hoviona has seen opportunities in other fields, and we have allowed them to pursue this because we cannot pursue all applications our, in our, ourselves. Uh, so we are focusing on the oral drug applications. Mm -hmm. yeah, interesting, and actually they, <clears throat> they also, well, invested, as I understood from you, and this, this just to remind the investors, this private placement, actually we have a company with a very strong ownership from people working for the company, but even from some of the partners and industry players. And, and this is a little unique uh, compared to, to what you normally see. Um, and this is not a biotech company, so that, that's probably why they, they have this strong commitment. But let's carry on um, in, in, in relation to questions. There's one question here about Ligan. You mentioned Ligan as an as a industry player, a competitor. Um, how does your um, technology differ from, from Ligan? And normally when you have a virgin market like this, there's always room for more than one player, but maybe you could elaborate a little on that. Yeah. I'll be happy to do that because uh, Ligand's technology is actually not uh, competing directly with our technology. Ligand, they have uh, they have developed a company uh, platform that's called Capsisol. So they make chemical molecules that you combine with the drug, but this is mainly for intravenous applications. So it's not really in the oral space. So you can say, in, in reality, our technology would, would complement uh, the space for the oral drug molecules. And uh, I think Ligand, they have, they have created a very substantial royalty income from these partnerships. They both uh, sell the licenses and they also sell the material, the, the, the Captisol components. And just for one from one partner, that's in this case Ambien, they get like $25 million a year from one product in royalties. So, so this is similar to what we are uh, aiming at. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a couple of questions in relation to, to you know, how, um, you know, how do you work with FDA or, or how does your client work with, with FDA? Um, there's a question here, a couple of questions from Nils. Uh, I, I will uh, publish them in, in, in a moment. So when you reformulate existing drug, do the partner always pay the cost for the clinical development, like in the insert case? And does, does it require some smaller trials with FDA? Uh, I think that's a very good question. Yeah, let me, let me try to answer those. Uh, first, uh, when you reformulate drugs, the requirements for clinical studies are typically much, much lower. And in many cases, you can you can, let's say, get away. That's not a nice word, but it's sufficient to make a bioavailability study where you show that the, the concentration you get in the plasma, or the, the concentration profile, is the same as the originator product. In our case, there may be some more demands because we are actually reducing dose uh, for the lead program, where we reduce it to 25% of the original dose, which will require some more uh, clinical studies. But still, the basis is that you compare the plasma concentration of the originator drug to our drug. And then if you go pure generics, which is not what we normally do, then you go one-to-one, -one, then you only need to, to test it in, in maybe 20 volunteers. It takes you two weeks, and then you have more or less the, the approval, or at least the data that is required for approval. So in many cases, it's actually not the clinical studies that are the most expensive, it's more the production or the manufacture of, of the new drug formulations. Do our partners pay for these clinical studies? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, we have some programs, uh, in particular our own lead program. There we want to pay for it ourselves because the more we can advance it or the longer, 
the more value we can actually build into the, the project. And since we, uh, si since we have the, the competences to do this, also with the use of ex external CEOs, uh, we believe it's a good model to do. And that also means we can control the projects. We, we, we are not dependent on the partners and their decisions based on, on different strategies, whatever. Uh, but we, our philosophy is we want to get the technology out as broad as possible. So we would rather have maybe an opportunity that we are not able to pursue today, let someone else take it, and then we maybe get smaller income in the end, but we get more programs started. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Ole. And then a final question here, uh, because time runs. Um, there's, there's a question, it's, yeah, it could be to you, Ole, but Jacob as well. Uh, could, could you just once again repeat what you're going to use the proceeds from the subscriptions from? Well, we will uh, mostly uh, spend the money on taking our lead program uh, forward. Um, so that's really the key purpose. At the same time, we are building our R&D facility uh, also at the same time investing in the technology. Uh, but the key purpose is to bring uh, ZNO02 uh, forward uh, towards the clinic. Thanks a lot, Jacob. Thanks a lot, Jacob. Um, um, with, yes, and with that said, you know, I think um, that's more or less the questions for now. Uh, this is the second event of four, uh, and we will host the company um, in two weeks' time again. So if you have questions, either uh, mail Jacob and Ole direct. I will, in relation to this interview, uh, post a video uh, within a day, day's time, uh, where we will, of course, um, include both Jacob and Ole's uh, contact information for people interested in, in, in the subscription and the private placement in this interesting company. And uh, you're also, of course, always welcome to post questions to us and we will uh, bring them forward to the management next time we host the company. So with that said, thanks a lot to the audience for all the good questions. Thanks a lot to Jacob and uh, Ole for a very good uh, presentation. And I hope you will get a really sunny and good day. Thanks a lot. <laughs>